this is the first time I'm really getting such openness from someone. You know, I watch a lot of interviews and, you know, you get some answers, but this is concrete advice. You know, this is someone who's been there from the UK and she's opened her school and this is real experience and real advice. Something like, it's raining, madam, I'm not coming to work because it's raining. Ah, uh? I mean, <laughs> petty. Is a day? It's raining. It <laughs> is raining. <laughs> we are not coming to work, it's raining. And the oh. and I apologize in advance if it offends you. I always say the average Ghanaian is very lazy. The average Guardian person is very lazy. Oh, she said it. Um, sorry, sorry about that. Oh, <laughs> she said it. She said it more than once. Um, I, I think the people at the back didn't hear you. The average Guardian. <laughs> Pardon me to say that. I um, can't hear you now. Pardon me. <laughs> and welcome to another episode with me well actually this is the first episode where i'm interviewing someone and today we have someone ever so special but before we start just two quick shout outs first one is to jasmine amma who shared the video about what demaya and jasmine amma inspired me so if you've not seen it head over there after this video to go and watch it also a special big huge massive gargantuan shout out to Denta. Now Denta we know has an MBE but guess what? She's not sitting on her high horse. She subscribed to our YouTube channel. She commented under the video. She followed me on Instagram. She commented on the video under my Instagram post. I mean she even replied to my inbox message to say thank you. She's showing us that even though she's up there, she's not going to be all pompous about it. So thank you very much. You are such an inspiration and continue being an inspiration and that humble attitude we love. Thank you very much. Talking about inspiration, however, today we have another inspirational woman with us on this sofa right here. Inspiration, tick, fashionista, tick. My God, the list is endless and I'm not going to say much. I'm just going to let her introduce herself to us. Sis. Hey. It's so good to have you here. Thank you for having me at Ken and Paul's. So, Sid, please tell us just a little bit about yourself, your background. Oh. Yes, my name is Tiwa Iboa. Um, I was born in Ghana. Um, I moved to the UK when I was about 13. Um, did my secondary school, sixth form, university, mm -hmm. and the rest in the UK. Mm -hmm. um, I do come from a big family. Yes, forward, finished uni, worked in the UK for some time, moved to Ghana. I'm really a um, simple girl who like good things. Um, <laughs> and I like to dream big and I'm, I'm very focused and very motivated. I would like to say that myself. I'm easygoing, but I'm also very, very fair and very, very principled in my, the way I do things. So yeah, that's really about me. Hmm, on that simple. note, this question is not for me. This is for management. <laughs> So some people want to know, is Tiwa single, dating, Ooh. married, you know? Mm. Um, the million dollar question. Yes. <laughs> um, um, Tiwa like to keep a lid on a few things. Um, I like to keep a lid on that for now. I like mm. to keep that a bit, a bit private for private now. Private woman, you like. <laughs> yeah, so at the right time, maybe. You don't you never know. I might even feel bad. <laughs> we'll put her details at the end of the video so you know okay so Tiwa tell us about where the motivation to move to Ghana came from it was not one of those that yeah I wanted to go to Ghana I, I don't know it was never on the plan sometimes I believe God intervene in our life at different point and different amen reasons amen to that and, and i believe in my case was a typical example of that my degree was in business management okay i wanted to be a city girl okay yes work in the city <laughs> that was a dream where um, the big money is <laughs> <you know? laughs> um, that was the dream um, okay and 
that was when I got pregnant. Oh, okay. And so right at the time that I needed to do that, I'm, I'm, I was just about to have my baby. Mm -hmm. I scrapped the whole idea of a sandwich and went straight for my three years. Mm -hmm. I didn't understand why that happened, but mm -hmm. it did happen. I was also not one of those girls you actually get in who get pregnant. I was not. Yeah. So it was even a shock. Like, I was like, hey. hey. <laughs> and funny enough, um, part of my final year project was mm -hmm. a group work where me and my team had to come up with a business plan. And guess what my idea was? What? The school. I don't know where that came from. The business plan for my for something that was going to happen five, ten years down the line wow. was actually done when I was in uni. Yes. Honestly, guys, I hope you're taking yeah. notes. So I feel like sometimes we need to listen. Sometimes we do have mm. dreams, but when we need to sometimes pray and listen to our intuition. Came out of uni, had my mm. baby, got a good interview in the city, mm. and then another thing strike. I had the day of my interview. My son's dad was busy, I couldn't get childcare, everything was just not going right. Yeah. So I thought, you know what, forget this. Forget this whole city idea, I'm not looking wow. for a city anymore. Let me look for a job locally, um, you know what, so I just did not turn up for the interview. Um, and all these... Childcare, so you did not child, turn child, up child care. to a big city yeah, interview. Yeah, I did not. I mean, some of you might be sitting there thinking how, but <laughs> if you live in the UK, you understand mm. the struggle with childcare. That was the second... Hint, I believe mm. um, God was giving me and telling me, okay, I'm preparing you for something that you are not aware of. Human resource is also part of my background. So I applied for school and the HR department into education. So even though you went into HR, you found yourself in HR in, in the school. In the school. You know what they say, rejection yes. may just be a redirection. <laughs> Definitely. And just at that time, we started this whole new thing. I was diploma within secondary school they pitched the idea to me and i'm like nah hr is my thing i'm mm. working here it's just passing through i'm going to go to the city and do my work and then i thought about it i'm like okay what's the hell let me mm. just apply i got the job i was the coordinator so i was in charge of whole diploma within our school so you were you were finding yourself deeply and more deeply <laughs> rooted in, in the education. education so i was doing all those things then pastoral Mm. I mean, when I, when I go to Ghana, I say pastoral, people say, oh, you're a pastor. <laughs> <laughs> Dress like this and I go, hey, you're a pastor. <laughs> like, and I like to use that. I always say, no, I say pastoral. Uh, oh, you're a pastor. Someone just scared. I guess a lot of that's like immigration. And so, yeah. Please tell us what's pastoral. <laughs> Because um, I'm sure a lot of you watching are thinking, um, oh, you passed that. Pastoral means it's, you can look at it as counselling and behaviour, being in charge of behaviour, mm. so behaviour management. And, Big um, responsibility it, in the school. It, 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 it. So that's how I got thrown into um, education. I always say there's a glass ceiling that people sometimes don't see, but mm. if you work within the industry or where I was working mm. and you get to see these glass even mm. and I felt like a lot of black kids were being disadvantaged <sighs> and there's sometimes you of course there's a limit to what you can do or what you can say with time um after the birth of my son yeah I went to Ghana for the first time okay um and my love for Ghana grew mm. so it's like every year I was going to Ghana but that time wow. I was going to Ghana as the party girl hey you know of <laughs> <laughs> you know, it was those times where we unfortunately grew up in a time where being African was not cool. Yeah. And the time that we were in school. Oh, and yeah, we have suffered. Yeah, at that time when I went to Ghana for the first time and I loved it. And so my love for Ghana grew. Yes. And no, we don't live in the jungle. <laughs> no, we do not. We do not. We don't live in the jungle. We, we definitely don't, don't live in these tiny little houses we're dwelling in in this country. It gives you this freedom oh. and it gives you a whole different perspective. And I realized Ghana was changing. My friends were getting into careers, they were mm. bankers, they were nurses, and they have families, it's just them and the husband is working. And they have childcare issues wow. like we have here. Things were changing. Mm. And then I realized, okay. Um, there's something we can do. Yes. 
Okay. Accra had that already in place. Yes. But Kumase did not. I mean, they mm. had nurseries, but not the standard of nurseries that I would like my child to go to. So, so are you hearing this? She found a problem. Yes. So your friends were in careers. They had big things happening in their lives. Mm -hmm. But they were struggling with childcare. Yeah. So you found there was a problem exactly in that area. So you decided to tap into that. That's it. Wow. So we always have to find a solution to the problem. Mm. Um, I know people will say, Oh, we have childcare, we have nannies. That doesn't appeal to everybody, mm. believe it or not. So and um, nowadays we have generations that are growing up, they want their kids to learn early, parents yes. are involved in their kids learning so they mm. want something for their kids mm. so i realized okay there's a niche and this is the audience i want that working class that market mm -hmm. so i did my research and then mm. hybrid angels was born wow so, hybrid angels yeah, go so my son inspired it, my career where god directed me through the path and it didn't derive from her wanting to make money you know, it came out of redirection in life. And even though she had a child, it did not stop her from actually redirecting her path and still being able to achieve something great. Tell us, how many children do you have on roll in Hybrid Angels? Um, not to give exact figures, but mm -hmm. before COVID-19, we were just below 300 students. Wow! Yes, yeah, just below 300. How many years have you been running Hybrid um, Angels? Five years now. Five years and you've got 300 children yes. on roll. Yes. Thank you. <laughs> this is 300 children yes. who are now receiving good quality education. Can you please tell us how many people have you employed then? Um, at the moment we have 31 staff. Right? 31 members of staff and 300 children. So you are providing a job and employment for people yeah. and you are educating our children yes <laughs> my goodness this is so inspirational so please tell us because i can imagine as someone who works in a school myself now running a school is not easy it, it <laughs> comes with so much not just the children not just the staff you have parents as well you have family members you have outside agencies so please tell us how is it running a school in Ghana? Um, first of all, I will say to everybody, no matter what you want to get yourself into, have a passion for it. Mm. That is number one. Have the passion for it. You think about, let's say, your nine to five job in the mm. UK. If you start something of your own, remember you're going to put in three times the effort, mm. believe it or not. It's not going to be more 9 to 5, it's 24 hours. Mm. Because that is, if you have passion for it, that's your baby. Mm. And therefore you put in all the effort. Wow. So you need to have passion for that thing. You need to mm. love that thing that you're doing. If wow. not, um, you will give up. Mm. Um, starting business in Ghana is not easy. Um, first is the process. Mm. It's never simple. It's you having to go through this person, having to go through this person. I mean, it's getting better now. Please give us examples of some of the people you had to go through I mean, to re-establish um, your school. First of all, for you to start any business, you need to register the business. Mm. Um, registration sometimes is not as straightforward as you going to company house here and just going online. You can register on company house and yes. start your business. It's not online. We're used to all these online. Sometimes you have to physically go to these places. Mm. And sometimes it's not easy. And sometimes you might wait there for maybe an hour or have an appointment with somebody. Then you go, oh, something came up. It's not always easy. Like, I'm wow. going to pick up the phone and drop it. Um, yes, <laughs> I'm not talking in favor of that. But sometimes I always say networking is always important. Mm. You need to network with people. Who you know. <laughs> <laughs> Hashtag who you know, guys. <laughs> it helps. <laughs> I'm not going to lie. It does help mm. to have a network. Um, people where you can they can help you. Yes. And make the process a bit quicker for you. Um, Ghana education system at the moment is also not where, to me, my point of view, where it should be. Mm. Because sometimes 
the process where it should be simple for people it's not simple mm. you know um, starting a business be in terms of tax paying tax and everything so I would say to you mm. do your research and speak to people research. who are already in the field okay because if not you'll be going back and forth mm. you do something thinking you're on the right path then you have a block and you, wow. you have to come back so do your research mm -hmm. speak to people who are already doing it yeah and so you know that you put your i dotted and your t crossed also um if you're going into education solely because of money sure. well, then you're in the wrong business um okay it, um it's not something that is a quick money and mm. it's not one of those well you build a house, a state, royal estate, somebody buy it and you get your money. Mm. It's not like that. It's a process. And you have to also remember that this is people's kiss your yes. this is education. It's human life. It's education. There are they are they are systems in place you mm. need to follow. You can't just go in there just to make the money. You have to actually care okay. about it. So in the long run, yes. Um it has the chance to mm. get you profit. If you're going into education, that shouldn't be your primary focus. Mm. You need to be focusing on, I really want to give and mm. educate and teach. And you need wow. to enjoy all of that, not just for the money. The money wow. is the bonus. Okay, money is bonus. You hear that? Yeah. So you've been running Hybrid Angels for five years. At which point within that five year period do you think you started to see profit? Yeah, I tested the waters before I totally jumped jumped in. I'm um, having said that what I meant is whilst the school was running, mm. I was still in the UK. So I didn't move to Ghana when I started the school. Mm. The school was established in 2015. I mean yes. I think 2017. Wow, so, so two, two years. Two years and a bit it run it was running and before I totally moved in. Mm. Um, so I was still working here, depending on my salary and making the school look after itself. Yes. I wanted the school to be successful. I wanted mm. to be right, I wanted more merit. Um, so I would say the time I decided to move to Ghana was when I knew that, okay, if I should let go of my income, yes. I will be able to pay myself salary mm. that I am comfortable with mm. in Ghana. So that's why I say to you, have passion for what you're doing mm. so that you don't have to put pressure like okay i will be in the uk i earn this amount of pounds every month therefore i need to be in ghana i need to make money guys and then you yeah. equivalent to that money okay you understand? if you do that you even i i encourage people to reinvest mm. so the first three years of every business it's about you putting your efforts reinvesting to make mm. sure the business is at a good position so i'll say Three years was when I decided, okay, I'm okay. You're ready. I'm ready to move wow. around. I feel the school is not comfortable. Mm. Because when well, I'm not saying it's successful, because my comfortable, comfortable <laughs> is the dreams I have for the school is bigger and it's going mm. to be bigger. So I believe after three years, I thought it was in a comfortable position for me to pack yes. my bags and go. And also, wow. I had a son who was still young mm. and i wanted him to go into secondary school before i moved yeah so it kind of worked out perfectly for me it's good to know you know that you don't just dive in because i've heard stories of people who just jump in head first yes and then within a year within two years they're back in the uk again it's good to know that actually a better way is testing the waters first so whilst you were here well the periods of time you were here and your school was still running in ghana did you have anyone who was you know had an eye on the school for you because i've heard stories of oh. finding people you can trust to actually still run the school the way you <laughs> want it whilst you are away luckily for me i was still working in education mm. and if you work in education you have that half time so yes those t so People who know me during that time, I was always in Ghana. At that mm. I was going to Ghana a lot. Every free time I have, even if it's a week, I'll go to Ghana and check. Mm. And within that time, I had to employ a headmistress, mm. but it's not easy. <laughs> <laughs> That's judging from the <laughs> smile alone. We go into it when we can't. We go into it, but I had luckily for me, my parents. Mm. My parents where my backbone mm. they were making sure that everything is taken care of really helped me because it was left with 
the people I employed at that time alone, mm. I don't think there will be anything left for me to pick up. Having somebody you trust, mm. somebody who really have your interests at heart, yes, um, is really important. The disadvantage of that is, I mean, you yeah. have your vision on how things are supposed to be and how things are, things are supposed to be done. Sometimes that vision is not totally seen, mm. but I mean, it's a process. Okay. It's a process, yes. So any challenges, any thing that you really think <laughs> this was a challenge that took a lot out of you, whether to overcome or is still a challenge that you are actually having to deal with now? Um, there's a lot, but the one that really stand out for me, and this was like when I was going into Ghana, yeah. I actually put on prone's corn and I wrote down everything I thought mm. would be a possible challenge. Yes. But one thing that people did not warn me about was human resource. Okay. And pardon me, I mean, this might offend a lot of people, but I always say this, and I pardon me and I apologize in advance if it offends you. I always say the average Ghanaian is very lazy. The average Ghanaian person is very lazy. Oh, she said it. <laughs> um, sorry, sorry about that. Oh, <laughs> she said it. She said it more than once. Um, I think I, the people at the back didn't hear you. <laughs> Pardon me to say that. Um, when I say that, I say it to mean that Ghanaians want, but they don't want to put in the effort and the energy and the time required. Mm. In the UK, if I apply for a job to be a teacher, I know my responsibilities. I know what it takes. I know everything because I'm a professional. I've gone yes. to school and that's what I know what it entails. Mm -hmm. Ghanaians want you to spoon feed them. <sighs> um, teacher with the experience, you, the experience, mm. will still want you to tell them, okay, you need to come into class, you need to have your lesson plan done, you need to have this done. You, they want to be spoon fed. Wow. Um, I went to Ghana and something like it's raining madam i'm not coming to work because it's raining uh? i mean <laughs> petty it's, a day. it's raining it <laughs> is raining <laughs> we are not coming to um, work it's raining and the problem start from the top if you have a manager or you have a, a, a mr headmistress or headmaster who goes to lunch and don't come in till three o'clock go do their business and come i mean who do you expect to be so these are i'm just giving you hints so human resource was a big thing. I mean, this is because they are not equipped. I mean, I think the wow. governments are not ready. We need the Ghanaian government need to invest into the future generation, mm. into the workforce. They yes. need to learn what it takes. Because if I was a foreigner and I'm coming into Ghana, mm. some of these things will put me off. I'm telling you. Yeah. But it's an off-putting and it's difficult and our wow. working ethics in Ghana really we need to really really change the work mm. ethics in Ghana you've taken me time but thank god wow. finally I'm able to get the right team and I think wow. I have the perfect I would my eye the perfect team now do you know what Tiwa this is the first time I'm really getting such openness from someone you know I watch a lot of interviews and you know you get some answers but this is concrete concrete advice you know this is someone who's been there from the uk and she's open to school and this is real experience and real advice coming from real experience she's giving us honestly this has opened my eyes to so much so um i mean what did you have to put in place then to overcome this specific challenge um, if you come to my school, I now have a fingerprint login system. Wow! Technology! So, hey! Uh, <laughs> repeat that, please! Please, please! Did, did, you, hear, did you hear that? Finger wine? Please, tell us again. Uh, we do have a fingerprint wow. login system. So you can't give your card, I swipe in. I came, madam, I came at this time, there's no book to come and sign. Madam, who oh, made by this time? Oh, nah. No, your fingerprints. So everybody's fingerprint is registered. You come in, the time you come in, you log in at that time. When you're going home, you log out at that time. It's also wow. part of our security system. Also, wow. there's CCTV coverage in wow. the classroom. Wow. So, That's I mean, a lot of money. Yes, it is. I mean, just these days, um, technology has gone so far. So yes. it's really not 
if you really want to you can invest in that without mm. spending too much on it so we have cctv in almost every classroom wow. and that's to protect their teachers and to protect their kids too mm. so when i'm in the uk when i'm in a meeting i on my phone i can just go on my phone or i can go on my laptop wherever i am in the world and i see everything that's mm -hmm. happening in the classrooms so these are the systems i've put in place and they know i'm monitoring i do a lot of lesson observations myself one thing i swing get your hands dirty mm. don't be scared to get or be i'm the boss in the office and like if you do that you'll be sitting there and people will be really <laughs> <laughs> your money would just be like tap water exactly. just flowing out um, into exactly. the drain so no matter what business or what field you're in be ready to get your hands dirty mm. so i was also i've also put in in appraisals mm -hmm. uh, teacher of the year teacher of the month so that's to motivate myself wow so, so you were actually recognizing hard those, work those are doing great fantastic and then, we put in things in place and these are helping wow us. i mean if you're a parent and you're watching this now and you're in ghana this is clearly a school i would want my child to go to because i know my children are safe i know that go there's going to be excellent teaching because there are appraisals there are systems in place ensuring that the teachers are doing the right thing and the child comes first because i know that actually someone is watching my child and not just the teacher in the classroom but also the owner of the school has the best interest of her school at the forefront of everything you know so parents please Tiwa tell us where can we find your school because right now I'm thinking if I'm coming to Ghana I need to enroll my child to your school to Highbury Angel School please tell us where can we find your school Highbury Angel School mm -hmm. um, we are located at Report Highways mm -hmm. um, at Report Junction come just before Kumasi Girls School mm. so that's where we are located we are on Facebook we are on Instagram we have a school website if you visit www.hybridangelschoolgana mm. please make note of this there's nothing wrong with networking with each other Tiwa has taken five years and she has adapted best practice from the UK in her school and I'm a qualified teacher you know my background and if I'm telling you this school is the one for you Believe me and trust me because fingerprint technology, <laughs> hey, you can cry in the so ni ma. We've talked about what's going on in Highbury Angels now. What's coming up in the future for you Ooh, then? I do have something in the future. It's, it's, a, it's a bit different from the field I'm in now. Mm. But I want to, I don't want to talk about it so much now. Mm. Maybe this time I'll be on the sofa talking about yes, it. Yes, <laughs> you will be back 100% to tell us more about other business ventures that she's got planned and in the pipeline. And before our sister goes, actually, I mentioned she was a fashionista. Please tell us a little bit about that. <laughs> <laughs> well, well, well. <laughs> I do have a little passion in dressing up and looking good and I think every lady does so yes I just for for the fun of it I do it for the fun of it so if you want to know where this ensemble is from please keeping up with lady T yes. I just gave you the juice on that one <laughs> it's absolutely brand new so go follow her on Instagram as well for the not so business side of her and you're going to love her even more just like we do here on Ekria Dimples sis it's been so good to have you oh, honestly you. this is so inspirational honestly for all of us in the UK in America abroad in the diaspora that want to make our way back to Africa I don't know if there's anything else you need to know because I have learned so much today um just before we go I just want to say my sister here is doing so great. I love what you're doing. No, oh, thank and you. Continue doing. And if you are not headhunting her, mm. I don't know what you're doing. You mm. need to because as soon as the, the borders are open, I'm taking her to Ghana to do some magic at my school. <laughs> we can't wait to have you. We can't wait to have you. So keep it up. Thank you so much for joining us today. Honestly, it's been very educational. Thank you for having me. Clear dimples. Uh, See <laughs> <T> why dimples. <laughs> I dream. <laughs> so yes, hope you enjoyed. Please comment, like, and subscribe to the channel if you'd like to see more videos like this. Don't forget to let me know. Add me on all socials, and I will see you very soon. Kiss from this dimple. Kiss from this dimple. Equia dimples. I am signing out. Bye. <laughs>